bring this meeting of the City of International Falls regular City Council meeting to order. It's 5.30, Tuesday, uh, January 21st. If you would please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on our agenda is to approve our agenda. We do have a handful of uh, additions. The first is uh, under old business to consider the planning commission recommendation to adopt the 2019 comprehensive plan. Number 12 is consider a Recreation Commission uh, recommendation to amend bylaws uh, for the city and school district joint powers agreement. And number 13 is to accept the retirement of Public Works Director Gary Skullman. Uh, we received uh, an additional report from the Public Works Department. It's their annual report. And we have a couple of items of correspondence that has come in, uh, one being the International Falls Public Library Board of Trustees meeting packet and the Minnesota DNR Deer Population Goal Setting Workshop uh, seeking public input. With those additions, I would, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. So we have a motion from Councillor Kraus to accept the agenda with additions. Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next is the approval of minutes from the January 3rd, 2020 Special City Council meeting. Chair, so we have a motion to accept by Councillor Deach. Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any discussion on the, the minutes from the special city council meeting? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next is the minutes of Monday, January 6th, regular city council meeting. So moved. We have a motion to accept the minutes from Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we have the uh, minutes of the January 13th Committee of the Whole meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any discussion on the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting? Hearing none, question. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. And I will vote yes. Motion carries. Four for the motion, zero against the motion, and one abstention. Next, we will go to the payments of claim. We have uh, transfers from the general fund uh, to the general fund from water, the 601 of $5,559.67, and from sewer of $4,392. We have two, uh, we have two fund 401, the permanent improvement of uh, $66,666.66, and that's split evenly between the 601 water and the 603 sewer in the amount of $33,333.33. Our capital outlay uh, to the 403 fund is uh, coming from water, $19,136.17, and from, from uh, Fund 603 sewer, $6,624.25 for a total transfers of $102,378.75. And then we have uh, International Falls 
claims of $474,145.68. Airport Commission claims of $7,631.86. And Library Board claims of $4,274.85. For a total accounts payable of $486,052.39. Chair would entertain a motion to make the transfers and the accounts payable. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Nelson. With the motion and second on the floor, any questions, discussions on the accounts payable? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we have audience. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to have a uh, speak to the council that's not on the agenda? Please come forward, sir. Please come forward and state your name. Okay. Randy Calder. Um, I wrote an article for the paper uh, a little while back about uh, the use of single-use plastic, and I wrote an uh, email to Councillor Deitch about it and. I wonder, hopefully, the members of the council have read that article. Uh, my request is that the city establish a committee of merchants and concerned citizens to uh, explore the possibility of moving forward with some kind of ban on single-use plastic. Okay. Mayor? Yes, please. I see Fort Francis adopted a policy on single-use uh, plastic also. Uh, I think that's a good idea, that, that we start looking at that just because of the environmental concerns. Okay. I, uh, one of the things that... Uh, does anyone else have any comments? Okay. Uh, please, Ken. Mayor, I just had a question. Uh, and I don't want to show my ignorance, but can you differentiate single-use plastics from other use? I presume it's plastic that can't be recycled. Right. Uh, typically, the target is plastic bags, okay? Throw-away plastic mm -hmm. bags that mm -hmm. have uh, become a, a real environmental disaster. There are five, five <laughs> pools in the oceans uh, made up of areas that collect plastic and garbage. Uh, the biggest one is the Great Pacific Garbage Dump. Uh, it's twice the size of Texas, so it's substantial. There's five of these in, in the oceans throughout the world. So uh, the concern is this is, these plastics that are in the oceans and in the in the rivers and lakes and streams are getting into our food supply as well in, as well as uh, causing other problems. But uh, one big example that I did uh, some research on is I read an article about a whale that was beached for some reason or other, and uh, they did an autopsy on the whale. It had uh, 80 pounds of plastic that it had ingested. So, plastics are getting ingested by the salmon, by, by uh, fish, and uh, so I think it's a real concern. Uh, I can't scientifically differentiate single-use plastic from other, but I think uh, you pretty well said it. That, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, there are some plastics that are disposable to a degree, uh, but there's a lot that can be done that we can do to kind of minimize it. There, there are some plastics we're not going to be able to get away from. For example, in the, in the uh, grocery stores, we're probably still going to stick with plastic to cover meat products and stuff like that. When, but uh, for a lot of the, even uh, doggy bags, those styrofoam things, they can be replaced with recyclable material. And a lot of restaurants have, restaurants have already done that. So. Well, I can tell you this, we will, I'll put that on our committee of the whole meeting for next month. We'll have a discussion and we'll see where, where we go from there. And um, so you're, you're, you'd like to see a, uh, 
a committee formed uh, in some capacity to look at, at kind of going to the single-use plastics ban? Of exactly, and I think the merchants would have the best input as far as uh, what's practical, what's going to work for them, and uh, some citizen input would be good as well. Okay. So. Well, thank you so much. We will put that on the Committee of the Whole agenda. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. And you had something you wanted to bring up? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. My name is uh, Joan Christensen, and uh, following up on what he was talking about, uh, another environmental concern. Um, as you may know, uh, despite both the UN and US scientists' reports last year uh, warning us that unless we reduce our uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030, 10 years from now, and become carbon neutral by 2050, we are going to experience catastrophic climate change. And despite that, our president pulled us out of the Paris Climate Agreement. So um, in response to that, um, over 3,200 cities, states, businesses, and organizations uh, pledged to keep the Paris Climate Agreement. And I belong to uh, a global warming committee of uh, Indivisible, and we are sponsoring a film called Paris to Pittsburgh. Um, and this film is uh, produced by National Geographic. It's a very good film. And it highlights um, four cities' efforts to uh, keep the Paris Climate Agreement. So I would like to invite uh, the council to attend this. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of good information here about what cities can do. And also uh, the discussion from the film will get ideas from people attending. So um, I'd like to invite you to, to come. The, uh, we're showing it tomorrow, actually. Um, I'd like to apologize for missing the last meeting. I got mixed up on the dates. So no problem. I know Joe set that up for me. Uh, but anyway, it's tomorrow uh, at uh, 5 o'clock at uh, Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in the basement. We're going to have um, a light meal to start things off, and then uh, the uh, film will be shown with a discussion by Lee Grimm, Dr. Lee Grimm. Um, and um, so I think it's a really good opportunity for uh, people at City Council to find out what cities are doing and to get ideas from, uh, from other uh, citizens in the community about what could be done, like uh, banning single-use plastics. So, Well, uh, so I have a follow-up question. It is available tomorrow at uh, um, 5 to 7 at Holy Trinity uh, Church. Is there another place that we would be able to see it? Is it available online? Is it available other places to see the... I can answer that. Please. Uh, the film is actually currently available on Disney+. Plus. Okay. And I just watched it the other day. Oh, great. Because I, as you know, I'm unable to attend tomorrow. To attend, I have yeah. a previous um, something else. I've got to travel tomorrow for a training. But the, uh, for anybody interested in watching the film, the film is available on Disney+, Plus under the National Geographic portion where you can just... Um, search it under Disney Plus, but it is there, and I believe it's also on National Geographic On Demand, but I don't think, don't quote me, I'm not certain that Minko okay. carries that, but. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you very much. And I will note, it's a really good film. Okay. All right, is there anybody else that would like to bring something to the attention of the City Council? 
All right, hearing none, we'll move on to old business, which is consider the planning uh, commission recommendation for the comprehensive plan. Ken, uh, Kelly, would one of you guys want to uh, just give us a brief update and then we can go into any um, changes that we'd like to look at? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll start, and uh, if uh, Mr. Myers has anything to add, he can. he's welcome to do that. Um, the Planning Commission did have a couple of meetings and reviewed extensively the proposed comprehensive plan. Um, and again, just a little bit of background information. Um, the current comprehensive plan that the city has has been in place since 1966. Typically, these are updated every 10 years or, uh, for, and, and rewritten every 20 years. So we've gone an extensive period of time based on the policies and guidelines in our plan dating back to 1966. So since 2017, we've been working with a consulting firm, the Community Design Group, to assist us and get input from a number of stakeholders and citizens, as well as other agency interests in updating our comprehensive plan. So the uh, Planning Commission held a public hearing on December 2nd, um, received public input. We sent out um, a copy of the plan and sought review comments from the city of Rainier, the town of Fort Francis, and Kuching County. And we received the last of that input um, in early January uh, from Kuchichin County. Uh, the Planning Commission conducted a, another meeting and a continuation uh, of consideration of the comprehensive plan on January 6th and adopted this resolution that was included in your packet recommending that the council move forward and adopt the comprehensive plan. And again, the plans uh, had a number of modifications um, since its original draft and uh, some of the things that were changed uh, were are included in your packet and you'll see that um, actually at the council's request at the last meeting we've included um, some changes to uh, a few pages page 38 39 40 of the uh, draft plan um, showing the revisions that the uh, consultant had made based on the county's comments. Essentially that was related to annexation and making sure that we coordinated with the county on any proposed annexations and also um, have a process that involves stakeholder or citizen input as part of that process. So clearly that's something that the city would be interested in doing and so some language was modified in that particular section. Another provision of the comp plan that was in the plan and then was removed was a section considering creating deer hunting zones in the community uh, that would be restricted to bow hunting only. But um, after review of the stakeholder input where um, I believe it was 40% of the people uh, were of the opinion that they didn't want to see deer hunting in the community. Uh, there was 30% undecided and about 30% in favor of it. The Planning Commission um, recommended and had the deer hunting section taken out of the code that you have in front of you or the comprehensive plan that you have in front of you. So um, deer hunting is no longer considered um, and won't, won't be allowed, at least in the comprehensive plan, um, going forward. So with that, um, it's a substantial document, and again, it's designed to provide strategies and guidelines for the Planning Commission and the City Council to follow, as well as uh, people who might be interested in doing future developments in our community. This lays out the policies and guidelines for moving forward. Uh, in particular, it lays out proposed land uses, and um, uh, again, the comprehensive plan is a guiding document. The actual tool that will be used to implement these um, policies and guidelines are the zoning ordinance and uh, that'll be something that'll be forthcoming uh, before the Planning Commission. Uh, my estimate would be in the next four to six weeks for them to consider that and uh, there'll be a new official zoning map adopted with the new zoning ordinance and then those provisions and the guidelines in the comp plan will be incorporated in the zoning ordinance and the zoning ordinance is what we'll use in uh, undertaking enforcement and future land use applications with, for building permits and other activities. So their recommendation through this uh, uh, 
a resolution is to move forward and recommend that the city council adopt the plan as uh, you see it before you. Um, my final comment would just be is that um, the council has the sole discretion in adopting the plan and any provisions and guidelines and strategies that you see in there. Uh, you can make any modifications that you see fit, uh, but the document you have before you tonight is the recommendation from the Planning Commission. And again, it's based on a couple of years input from citizens through uh, citizen engagement in personal meetings at various businesses, uh, website, uh, and other surveys. So. It's a fairly comprehensive document, and it's uh, had a lot of community engagement. So I just want to, to clarify for the council, we can accept the, the, um, the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission to adopt it as presented today. We can also make modifications in the event that there sh may be modifications that we'd like to make to it. So at this time, I would uh, open up discussion on if any modifications need to be made before we adopt the um, the planning and zone or the comprehensive plan that we've been in works with for years. Mr. Mayor, please. So on page thirty-eight, okay. they, there was a rework of uh, the previous version, the version delivered on the 24th of October. There was a rework of that paragraph on page 38, which I am okay with. Uh, the pre Would you like me to read the previous paragraph? Uh, I'm looking at the, I have the old. Just the, the, use, the, use the paragraph that's in the document. Okay, the, the document, okay, the, I, I'm okay with this. That this plan recommends completing these steps before, and this is in regards to annexation, that we uh, completing a financial cost benefit analysis on the implications of the proposed annexation, absolutely. Close, close coordination with Kuchichin County, absolutely. Communication with the affected landowners, absolutely. I am, I am okay with that. Um, there are there are two changes on our on our agenda for or on from this document from the document that was delivered to the planning commission to this document so I'm okay with that on page 40 is where I take I, I, a slight issue in that in that paragraph which paragraph uh, it's the strengthening coordination okay, gotcha. with the county the paragraph currently reads, city, city leaders have noted that there are opportunities to increase coordination with the county regarding residential development in areas outside of the city. That paragraph, or that sentence previously stated, regard, it, it was city leaders have noted that there are opportunities for better coordination with the county regarding limiting residential development in areas outside of the city. That is the language that the Planning Commission asked that we strike. Okay. I have to say that I am against striking said language because this is International Falls' comprehensive plan, not Kuchichin County's, and I feel it is in our best interest as the city of International Falls to limit taking city utilities outside of the city limits. Okay. That includes city water, Minnesota power, natural gas, and sewer. Okay. They recommended that we, we remove that language. I don't know that I'm necessarily comfortable with that and I am not comfortable with expanding utilities outside of city limits. If you want city utilities, live in the city. So, Please help me with the wording of what you'd like that to say. I would just like that limiting residential development in areas outside of the city. We didn't say we're we're stopping it. We just said that we're limiting. We will have a conversation about it. I'm okay if, and ultimately it's up to us as a council. But I again will state, if you want city utilities, live in the city. Okay. Anyone else have thoughts on that particular language that uh, Councilor Krause is noting? Mayor, please. I think he makes a lot of sense. I agree 100% with his full statement, okay. and I agree that if you want the facilities, you should live in the city. Okay. All right. 
Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Is anybody against at this point? <coughs> um, is anybody? Okay. No, we're, we'll just leave that conversation right now. <coughs> is there any other points that we want to discuss? Mr. Chairman. Please. Uh, Kelly, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? I don't want Okay. To the same point as what uh, Councillor Kraus had uh, had just brought up, and I guess mine is slightly my concern is slightly different. I uh, I do slightly disagree. There is a Minnesota statute that discusses how we handle annexation, and all of the Minnesota statutes that ha that describe how a municipality would handle annexation is very well laid out in state ordinance. Um, I think that a lot of the information on page 38 could be struck because obviously we're going to do a financial cost benefit. We're not just annexing people to annex. Uh, close coordination with Coochichin County. Uh, we have to notify everybody that is uh, 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 affected by um, any annexation and the same thing with the affected land owners. What concerns me about the language, again, is to what Councillor Kraus just said on the other side, this is the City of International Falls' um, comprehensive plan. Obviously, we're going to be following state statute. We're going to be doing everything legally. We have to have public hearings if we do annexation. We have to talk to the affected uh, owners of the properties to add in additional steps into the annexation to me doesn't uh, serve the best the best for International Falls. So I would like to, on page 38, strike the sentence that says this plan recommends steps one, two, and three because we could put in the wording that International Falls would uh, handle all Minnesota state laws and statutes regarding annexation and then strike each one of the, the lines that says the plan recommends completing the outlined above and then proceeding to annexation in, if warranted. Those are all things that we're going to do. And, and I understand that if we're going to do them, you, you could have them in the paperwork. But it just seems like we are really pushing our comprehensive plan for people that are not in International Falls. And that, that's, that's my thoughts, is on page 38 to strike those four sections. And the last piece that I had is the most minor of anything we've just discussed is on page 62. I would like to add in goal number four, work with, uh, in paragraph two, work with the ARDC, the Cochin County HRA. I'd like to add the International Falls HRA. Um, historically, our International Falls HRA has not uh, worked in this capacity, but I don't want to limit us in the future in the, if uh, the International Falls HRA is willing to change uh, what they're doing. And I'd like to add on page 62 the International Falls HRA in, uh, in strategy 4.1. Is there anything else that we'd like to discuss in regards to the um, the comprehensive plan as presented? If not, at this oh please did some I, well, Mayor, I, I was just wondering for your your suggestions on page thirty eight, then showing what should be struck. Do you have you'll have an example of that so we can? I do. Um, I, I do, and, and I will 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 definitely lay that out once we have a motion on the okay. on the floor. We'll lay out any changes that we're going to do. Mr. Mayor, please. Do we have to do the changes one by one, or are we going to do it all in one? I think we should uh, do them one by one. I agree. So the chair would entertain a motion to um, uh, accept <coughs> the comprehensive plan of 2019 as written. We can make amendments on the, once we get going. As written. As written. Then I would make a, make a motion. 
for one of the, for change of the document? I was gonna what I was gonna do what what my what what I was gonna do is make a motion to accept as read and then make amendments to the motion, to the motion. so each one okay. of the amendments gets voted on. I move that we adopt the planning document as written so that we can discuss potential changes. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. So we are now in discussion uh, of accepting the comprehensive plan as written. Is there any amendments at this time? On uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I propose on page, sorry, because I lost it now. 40. Page 40, I propose that we go back to the original language, adding limiting residential development in areas outside of the city. Okay. That has been in the document since it was written in 2017 and gone through committee after committee, time after time for the last Fair three enough. years, I feel. Do you, Ken, do you have the original uh, language on that particular piece? I do not have it in front of me, no. Here, pass it down. Is this one right here? It certainly is. Okay. So, the recommended language that I believe the, the motion on the floor is, is the paragraph strengthening, strengthening coordination with the county as written in the previous version of 10 24 19, reading as such. City leaders have noted that there are opportunities for better coordination with the county regarding limiting residential development in areas outside the city. Closely working with the county to adopt a unified stance that will help reduce potential future requests for provisions of services outside the current service area and will help protect the area's agricultural and natural assets. And that was from the previous version of 10 24 19. We have a motion to amend the document with that language. Do we have a second? Okay. We have a second. Any discussion on that? <clears throat> Mayor. Please. And I just want to, <clears throat> excuse me, make it clear with the council that <clears throat> that was actually the sentence that I think created the most heartburn, if you will, for the uh, um, county when, when it was presented to the county board as a committee of the whole. But um, I understand the city council's position. I just wanted to make that clear to each of you. And, okay. and I, I think the language is consistent with the um, state policy on annexation as well. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and second for the first <coughs> amendment to the document. Any other discussion? Question on the amendment? Aye. 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 And I will vote yes, motion carries. Five zero. The second uh, amendment is the one that I had brought forth, which would be on page 39. And I would make the motion to strike the language on, I'm sorry, page 38. To strike the language on page 38 that starts with, this plan recommends completing these steps before any an annexation action. All three bullet points. And then in the first paragraph, the second paragraph and the third paragraph, the wording that says, the plan recommends completing the steps outlined above and then proceeding to annexation if warranted. That would be my motion for the second amendment. I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion on that amendment? Hearing none. Question on the Second Amendment. Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> and the Third Amendment is the uh, one that I also brought forward, which would be on page 32. 62. I'm sorry, 62. And on page 62, under goal 4, strategy 1 point, or I'm sorry, 4.1, Paragraph two, after the word, the Cuchin County HRA, I would like to add International Falls HRA. That would be my motion. I'll second that. 
We have a, mo a motion and a second to have a third amendment, which would be adding the words International Falls HRA under strategy 4.1 on page 62. Any discussion on the third amendment? Mr. Mayor. Please. I, I too feel very strongly that getting the International Falls HRA involved in, in any conversations about housing and workforce housing is important. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I would vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Are there any other amendments that we have not discussed that you would like to add to this document before we vote on it as a whole? Hearing none, we have a motion on the floor with three amendments. The first amendment is the one that Councilor Krause had offered on page 40. The second one is on, uh, that is the one I had offered on page 38. And the third one is on page 62 that I had offered. All three have passed, so the motion is to accept the comprehensive plan with those three changes. Any discussion? I, I just want to say this has been a very, very, very long project. Um, we've went round for round. We had city input. We've had uh, public input, business input. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission met so many times, and I can't even count the many of hours that uh, the administrator has put into this. And this is, uh, you know, I, I, I say this sometimes because it's so true. Mayor Anderson has laid a lot of uh, uh, groundwork for us to be able to move forward, and this is one of the things that he pushed so hard so that we had it. The last one that we had was from 1966. Um, it's advised to have a new one probably every 20 years, so we're only a little bit behind. So with that being said, uh, with no other discussion, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> feel that weight to off your shoulders. All right, now we'll go on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is items that uh, don't need discussion. Average common business. The first item we have is to approve the quote for the workers' compensation coverage uh, and deductible premium option through the League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust and authorized signatures. The second one would be to approve and allow the street commissioner to attend the 2020 conferences and training as presented. And the third would be approved travel and skill path training exercise expenses in Brainerd for the fire chief and city administrator. Your quite, um, chair would entertain a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Bowler. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. No discussion on the consent agenda. Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next, we go on to new business. We have a proclamation by the mayor, uh, <coughs> City of International Falls, State of Minnesota. The proclamation is uh, was asked for by uh, St. Thomas School, Aquinas School, for Catholic Schools Week. <coughs> Chair would entertain a motion to accept the uh, mayoral proclamation. Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. A proclamation of the by the mayor, International Falls, State of Minnesota. Whereas St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic School is accredited by MNSAA Minnesota Non-Public Schools Accrediting Association, which is committed to ensuring school quality through rigorous standards and whereas St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church is committed to providing a safe, structured, and caring learning environment dedicated to developing each student's God-given potential and whereas St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church education is demonstrated by its ability to contribute to the city's welfare through its history by raising levels of knowledge, competence, and experience and whereas St. 
St. Thomas Catholic School has nurtured the gifts and talents by each child through a challenging academic curriculum and daily opportunities to grow in mind, body, and faith. Now, therefore, I, Harley M. Drora, I messed my own name up, Mayor of International Falls, do hereby declare January 26, 2020 through February 1, 2020 as Catholic Schools Week at St. Thomas Aquinas School. In witness, wherefore, I set my hand this 21st day of January 2020. Cheater. <laughs> All right. You have heard the proclamation by the mayor. Question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, Public Works Committee recommendation to install school zone signs on 4th and 8th, 4th Street at 8th and 9th Avenue for St. Thomas, St. St. Thomas Aquinas School. So moved. Yeah, we have a motion and second. Um, I just want to be uh, very clear uh, now that we're in discussion of this already. Uh, this will not be done until spring uh, with the snowbanks the way they are, with the, where we're at. Uh, it was discussed at, uh, at the public works meeting that this is very important that we do this, but uh, the timing will do it in the spring. So, Agreed. Any, uh, any other discussion? I don't think anyone seconded it. Oh, he did. Okay. It went really quick. Okay. They were both trying to. You know what, Mr. They were, Mayor? They were both trying to motion. Mr. Mayor, may I? Um, I would rather, since Councilor Buller is the chair, allow him to, since we both motioned at the same time, to give him the motion, and I will, in fact, second it. Okay, so the motion is by Councilor Buller, and the second is by Councilor Kraus. I didn't know that uh, school zone signs were so exciting that you guys have to fight over the motions. <laughs> well, it's in my ward and it's near and dear to my heart. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. <clears throat> Next is a resolution. Um, for business development infrastructure, uh, application to the Minnesota Department of Economic uh, Development, or DEED. Uh, Ken, if you'd like to give a quick update on this one. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, this is a resolution that was prepared. It's essentially a form resolution that the Department of uh, Employment and Economic Development prepares for this particular business development infrastructure application and grant and uh, we are intending on submitting an application to improve 22nd street with curb and gutter um, bituminous road surfacing there's already street lighting out there but there'll be some uh, water main uh, looping and connections as well as a sanitary sewer extension um, this is primarily necessary because of uh, ricky roach's uh, building at the end of 22nd street and the ups business that's operating out of that on a lease basis and uh, Kita has an industrial park and the council's recently approved a a preliminary plat um, for that area so uh, um, we're applying for grant funds which are 50 percent local 50 percent deed to do those public improvements um, Kita had initially started doing this work but um, our engineers with WSN have offered to do it at no cost to the city and they've worked with a number of their other clients in submitting these. So uh, we had it on the agenda to approve and be prepared to submit an application by January 31st. Um, the KEDA executive director is great with uh, WSN working on it, but we want to extend it or provide a little bit additional time to do it. So I, I would envision at the earliest, having this on the agenda February 3rd, and um, this is just for your information, we'll bring it back to the council at a future meeting. Okay. So we will have this under old business at the next meeting then? Yes. All right. Um, next, we have a resolution uh, approving the application for an exempt permit for the Ruffle Grouse Society Voyager chapter to conduct a raffle on March 27th, 2020. Chair would entertain a motion. Motion. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second, second by Councillor Bowler. Discussion. 
Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next is uh, a resolution approving an application for an exempt permit for the Rotary Club of International Falls to conduct bingo and a raffle on February 29th, 2020. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Nelson. Discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor? Yes. May I add that this is for the Mardi Gras gala that all the proceeds go toward uh, trying to get the spray park done. So this is a really good event. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Ken, just so you know, on that uh, on that application, um, when we when I sign it, it the um, date is wrong on the on the resolution. It says the toost toost the toost day rather yeah. than the twenty first. Very good. We'll make that. Correct. Okay, next we have a mayoral appointment to the Police Civil Service Commission um, uh, due to a vacancy uh, expiring December 31st, 2020. Um, it would be my intent to fill uh, Julie Ehrman into Dave Peterson's position. And I want to thank Dave uh, for his many years of service on the commission, uh, especially in, in the last couple of years. We've had a lot of uh, work in that, that uh, in the police civil service, and I, I do really appreciate what he's done. So um, with that being said, I did receive a letter of res re resignation from uh, Mr. Peterson, and it would be my intent to uh, appoint Julie Ehrman to fill his vacancy. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that vacancy. So moved. So we have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Okay. We have a second by Councillor Bowler. Discussion. Um, one of the things that I do want to point out is Julie Ehrman has a background in HR and that was one of the things that I was really hoping to get on both uh, the fire civil service and the uh, police civil service. So um, for the police civil service now we'll have a, a past officer and an HR uh, person. I think that that'll really balance out what we have on that committee. So any, discuss any other discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. <coughs> Motion carries. Next is uh, the fire department fee schedule for 2020. This was uh, was submitted to the committee of the whole uh, at our last meeting, recommended by the fire chief. Chair would entertain a motion to adopt the fee schedule. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Any discussion? Okay. We have no discussion. Question? Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we have uh, the approval of the 2020 pay equity report. Administrator Anderson. Uh, thank oh, you, I man. love the smile as soon as I said that. Uh, that's the best part. <clears throat> well, I always smile when you call on me, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, <laughs> well, ac actually, we uh, uh, this is a pay equity report. It was distributed uh, and at your table this evening. Um, the reason it wasn't included in the packet is uh, we had briefly met um, and discussed this with the HR committee on Friday afternoon. Um, this particular pay equity report is one that all local governments in Minnesota are required to submit every three years. Our last one was submitted in 2017, reflecting pay equity for pay that existed in 2018. This particular report is for uh, uh, our third year of compliance and, and it's for pay that existed in, in uh, December of 2019. 
Um, so this is a report that's required to be submitted to the state by the end of January. That's why it's on this agenda. And uh, essentially the Pay Equity Act was one that was adopted back in 1984 and it requires that uh, positions um, receive comparable pay for comparable worth or work. And uh, specifically any jobs that are, or positions that are female dominated positions cannot be underpaid relative to male dominated jobs or classifications. Uh, with this particular report, um, <coughs> We've prepared this based on, as I said, the 2019 salaries, and this report shows that we are non-compliant, and um, we need to make adjustments um, or look at options for making adjustments. I have a call into the state um, program administrator regarding that. Um, the report is due by January 31st, and this being the last council meeting, uh, this is reflective of what our actual pay is. And so at the present time, I'm recommending that the City Council adopt this report, uh, despite the fact that it's non-compliant, and uh, allow us some latitude to work with the state to explore options to bring it into compliance. Um, if necessary, it may require a, a follow-up council meeting between now and January 30th, but um, I don't have complete information to, to say that with certainty. Um, I will say, uh, just to elaborate a bit, is that um, one of the, there's a couple of reasons why we've come into non-compliance, and some of them are kind of behind our, beyond our control. For instance, we've uh, previously, in the last report that was submitted, had a female in the finance officer position, and it was above the predicted pay line. Um, she left the state because of uh, employment with her husband, and so we hired another person as a replacement, which is a male. And again, that position is at or above the predicted pay line, but it shows that there's fewer female-dominated positions that are at or above the predicted pay line. So that basically put us in the non-compliance. Um, essentially, all we have to do is bring one position uh, up at the predicted pay line and we would be compliant. So in order to do that, we have two positions that are uh, part of a bargaining unit, so we need to coordinate with the bargaining unit to make changes. And one person or position that would be at the library and the library board of trustees makes those decisions. So right now it's um, something that we don't have a lot of direct control over without getting input from other agencies. So that's as complete and thorough as I can be and, and very transparent. Um, I'm not happy with having to submit a non-compliant report, but I think the state, once they receive it, will notify us of non-compliance, and then we have some time to uh, work through and resolve uh, whatever issues need to be acted on to bring it into compliance. All right. Well, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, um, approve the pay equity report. So moved. We have a motion by Councilor Bowler. Do we have a second? Second. We have, Councilor, we have a second by Councilor Nelson. Any discussion? Question? Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries. 5-0. Next, uh, we have a um, promotion of police officers Justin Franz and Paul Kennedy to the rank of sergeant. Uh, you did get a letter from the, the police chief um, with, those, uh, with the information from the uh, from the police chief. Any uh, chair would entertain a motion to those promotions? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Point of order, this is just council information, not action. Oh, yeah. You're the best. All right, so that, and I we actually knew that. It was in the Committee of the Whole when he told us that. All right, so the one that we do have to take council action is to appoint uh, Logan Hulst, is that correct? Logan Hulst as a part-time police officer, effective January 22nd, 2020. And again, that information was uh, supplied by Chief Mastin. Chair would entertain a motion for that one. So move. So we have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? One second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. And discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And 
and I will vote yes. Motion carries, 5-0. So next we have to get a resolution for the PERA declaration for part-time uh, officer Logan Hulst, now that we have him hired. Chair would entertain a motion for that. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries, 5-0. Next is a uh, uh, to consider Recreation Commission uh, recommendation to amend the bylaws uh, for city members in the joint power agreement. So the, the wording that uh, is getting changed is under the recreational membership. Um, Recreation Commission membership. The new wording will read, the City of International Falls and School District 361 to consist of three members each, but no less than one elected official. The remaining two appointees may be any member from their taxing district at the independent discretion of each representative, representative council or board. The Recreation Commission will elect three at-large members to the board. And that is uh, that has had two readings at the Recreation Commission. So the uh, before us is whether we're willing to adopt those changes in the Joint Powers Agreement. Chair would entertain a motion if we're willing to do that. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Nelson. Discussion? Well, this is one of the things that uh, we did bring up um, at the end of last year in, uh, in December, November, December, that we wanted to look at getting bylaws changed so that we can have more ability to appoint uh, citizens to boards. Um, we still have uh, conversations going on with the airport commission and uh, with Kita, but this is the first one that we went from our city council to our committees, our joint power agreements, and then uh, ultimately those they changed the agreements and they're going back to their uh, their parent organization. So I appreciate the work that uh, we did here to get it back down to the rec commission to come back to us. So I appreciate all the hard work that we've all done from the rec commission to this board. So with that being said, we have a motion and second to approve the bylaw changes. Uh, Chair would call a question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. <coughs> Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> and next we have a letter of retirement uh, from our public works director, Gary Skullman. Gary, would you like to come up and just say a couple of words? Because we, uh, <coughs> you're kind of a fixture around here. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I... Just like to say thank you for you and all previous elected officials and the city employees that I've had the opportunity to work with through the years. It's been a it's been fun and it's been hard at times and controversial and pretty much I guess you could call it life. So yeah, it uh, <laughs> it uh, it's been something that's. I've uh, tried to do the best we can on that, and and uh, <clears throat> I think it's with circumstances the way they are. It's it's a matter of I just it's time to move on and let the city move on with some other issues. Also, so yeah. um, I think it's been, uh, it's been very rewarding for me, and I hope I want to be able to work with the rest of the people and that stuff and provide the information it has for the years so no. I well when you came into my office on Wednesday and we, we kind of discussed it and I read your last line as you're talking to me because you gave me you gave me your uh, your letter of resignation or, or your retirement letter and as you're talking I'm reading through and I just came across the uh, June 15th 1971 feels like yesterday 
<laughs> and with that being said, all of the conversations I've ever had with you with public works or anything, and we'll be like, well, what size pipe does that have over there? And you'll be like six inch until you get to 53, uh, to, uh, 53 and then it turns, you know, just the vast knowledge that you have of everything that's under our ground that we can't see to even make, find out if you're making it up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate everything you've given the city, and I've only had an opportunity to work with you for five years, but I know that the people that have been in the city have nothing but great things to say about you and your time here. So, I, uh, you know, like I said, I only have five years in, and you have, well, more than my lifetime in. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, um, Com Commissioner uh, Skullman is going to um, take his retirement on the 31st of January. Uh, with that being said, I would um, take a motion to accept his letter of retirement. Make a motion with regret. Okay, we have a motion. With regret, does that mean that he still has to come back, or what? I don't. I don't even know how that works. I know how many times you had to quit and come back. Just once. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion to uh, accept the letter of retirement. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Mayor, please. Um, I do want to say that. These days are truly remarkable, I think. Um, one of the things that's been most impressive to me about International Falls has been the longevity that we've been able to maintain with our staff. And, um, you know, for Gary, you had talked, and really Gary is the institutional memory of our public works department. He does have all that stuff in the back of his head, actually in the forefront of his head, because he can just recite it like that, and we're going to miss that. Uh, that's been an asset for our community. And um, so to, to be with the same employer in public employment since 1971 is truly remarkable, because a lot of staff come and go. Gary is not. <laughs> He's really dedicated his life to this community, and he and I talked a little bit today, and he spent a lot of time in his service to the fire department. He spent six years in service on the ambulance department, and he's been with the public works department since 1971. So um, I hold public service because I, it's my chosen field in very high regard and somebody that can withstand some of the blows <laughs> and the trials and tribulations in public works department for this many years is truly a credit to him right. uh, having, the, having done it that long. So I just personally want to wish you well, Gary. I want to thank you for everything you've done for the city of International Falls and our citizens. And um, I, I really, on behalf of all the staff, we're truly appreciative of everything that you've done. So thank you very much. Uh, we're sorry to see you leave. And um, I just, um, it's truly incredible that he's been here this long. And I, I think it's a credit to the city and it's a credit to him and his, his, uh, his uh, attitude and, and work ethic to our community. So thank you. Thank you. All right, with nothing else to be said, uh, question? Aye. 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 And I will vote no. Motion carries 4-1. 48 and a half years. <laughs> Are we supposed to follow? We have to. Okay. Go oh, this way. Thank you. Well, we had a plan on this side of the table. Yeah, it was kind of scary. I was like, <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Oh, thank you, Gary. Keep your phone close. Gary, I will say you were outdone by Donna Hodel, though she was with the county for, I think, 71 years. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> So that brings up a, a second piece to uh, um, the retirement of uh, Gary. 
we need to authorize a process to fill the vacancy. We did have an HR meeting last Friday um, and we had a quick discussion about this and I think what uh, what we'd like to do is to put the uh, put Commissioner Brokaw in that position as a um, how would you, how would we word that uh, oh, interim. interim position while we get through the 53 project and see how we restructure uh, public works what makes sense moving forward so I would uh, Ken do you have anything to add to that well, Mayor, I would just add that um, in the past when we've had vacancies at uh, department head level positions, and I guess the one that comes to mind uh, most recently is when uh, my predecessor left the city, there was a vacancy for about um, 12 months, actually. And so uh, in the interim period, the city had authorized additional pay for the deputy city administrator to assume the additional responsibilities of, of the current position that she held as well as the city administrator's position. And we have a similar scenario here with um, the public works director retiring on January 31st and then the uh, street water commissioner being the next uh, uh, next level administrator or, or manager in the department. Um, perhaps you'd want to consider um, an interim pay adjustment for him assuming these duties and responsibilities and I have to say and I, I can probably speak for Gary I know that he was kind of looking forward to the next couple years because the City Council has embarked on a very ambitious public improvement project with doing as many as 84 streets in in 2020 uh, a similar number close to it in 2021 and the highway 53 reconstruction project and you know that's really a public works director city engineer dream is to have those kinds of projects uh, before you but again uh, Gary is going to be uh, needing to step down and so uh, there's a lot of responsibilities and a lot of work to move forward with that and uh, I think the street commissioner deserves some compensation for the additional work that's going to be coming up until we can uh, address the questions that you raise regarding um, department organization and reappointing a, a new public works director Um, I, I would say I did speak with uh, with Commissioner Brokaw and he is not too well I don't know how, how to word that but he, he said he's not interested in in a pay raise but that's weird who says that um, it's kind of weird but what, what I would like to do is to if uh, if the council is interested I would like to appoint him into an interim position and as we look at how we're going to handle the um, the public works department moving forward we can maybe look at going back with uh, with back pay moving forward but as of right now I would like to accept Commissioner Brokaw's wishes and not give him a pay, pay raise put him in that role and let's find out uh, how we're going to reorganize the, the department Commissioner Brokaw would you like to speak on your own behalf Please. Yes, I would uh, just like to add there's a great deal of humility in the broke out there. So, uh, I would be against that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, please. I move that we appoint the street commissioner, Ted Brokaw, into the interim position of public works director and explore further potential salary increases with back pay. With back pay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? <coughs> second. We have a second. We have a, a motion and second to appoint Commissioner Brokaw to acting public works director and look into uh, back pay as we find out what salary or whatever we're going to work through HR. Is that accurate? Yes. Yep. Okay. And I guess I missed as you were right, you were making your motion. Do we have a second on that? We do have a second. Okay. So we have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. You have big shoes to fill, Ted. And you have to be here for a while. <laughs> when did you start? 
All right. Uh, any other any other business uh, regular business to come before the council? All right. Uh, do we have reports that were given to us from uh, uh, city administrators? Uh, Oh, our business licenses, uh, the administration department, public works department. Uh, we did get a some information from Kelly Myers and the police department and the fire chief. Is there anything you'd like to add, Administrator Anderson? I do just want the council, or <clears throat> excuse me, I do want the council to be informed that um, the finance officer, the deputy city administrator, and myself will be on a phone conversation with Moody's rating agency on Thursday, the 23rd of January at 10 a.m. to go over some uh, questions that the rating agency has on our upcoming refunding bond issue for the Voyagers National Park headquarters bond. So they have some standard questions. Hopefully they'll be providing those in advance so that we can have a conversation with them and, and obtain a a bond rating for that upcoming issue. So, uh, other than that, I don't have anything else I would like to add. And I want to thank all the departments actually for the work that they invested in preparing the annual reports for the council so you can kind of have a better idea of what we do over the course of the year. And again, it's highlights, it's not everything, but I think it hopefully the council and the public can have a, a better appreciation for all the work that goes in the day-to-day -day activities of our various departments. So I want to thank them for that. Thank you. Did you want to, uh, and, and you're welcome to say that we're not ready to, uh, the conversation this morning with the county regarding the uh, airport financing? Um, I can talk about that. Um, the finance officer and myself attended the uh, Kuching County Board Committee of the whole meeting. Uh, the purpose of the meeting was just to discuss the, um, I'll call it a cash flow deficit with the airport project. Um, as the council knows, we've had a, uh, a rebuild of the terminal building and that was a two-phase project and so phase two has not been totally completed. And then um, we've embarked on a runway reconstruction project that is a four-phase project or about four years. And those costs are fairly substantial. And um, the bulk of the costs are paid by the FAA. MnDOT is paying as much as 2.5% of the costs and then the city and the county only have to split the other 2.5%. So it's a, um, a very good program, but the cash flow deficit comes up because we have to expend the monies first submit um, claims for reimbursement and then it takes roughly three weeks or even longer, uh, particularly a lot longer on change orders. And so um, um, we've, because of that, there's a, a deficit that's carried over and we've just asked the county to submit their share because we're 50-50 partners with the county uh, on the airport commission. And uh, so we had a brief discussion about that this morning and the county is going to be setting up a, a subcommittee of uh, two of the commissioners that sit on the airport commission and myself and the county administrator to talk about um, how the county can move forward to uh, reimburse the city for roughly uh, $950,000 in costs. Uh, the city does serve as the fiscal agent for that, and so we expend the monies initially and then uh, get reimbursed uh, again from the FAA and MnDOT. So we had a conversation about that this morning and there'll be more to come. Okay. Any, uh, any other department heads that want to uh, address the council? Hearing none. Reports of the mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Um, I, I, I have one thing. Uh, it has not become public knowledge yet. We just found out today. The KTI Kuching Technology um, Initiative got all of the funding for the broadband grant, $6.5 million to expand broadband from International Falls to um, uh, Ericsburg and International Falls to the junction. Uh, with that being said, it will be to the house broadband from uh, International Falls to both entities. Um, a lot of hard work went in from 
Ted Saxton, Jim Yunt, uh, Joe Marchand, Paul Nevinen, and I showed up from time to time. So it was uh, very, very good. Paul Bunyan has been, uh, it's, a, it's a total $6.268 million project uh, that is going to cost us roughly $22,000. So, pretty good stuff. <laughs> so, that's all I have today. Um, I, I have to apologize. I'm usually pretty pretty good about getting mayor uh, reports and stuff in, but Icebox Days was a huge thing this year. That really took a lot of time, and I want to thank uh, the Chamber, Public Works, uh, the Police Department, Fire Department, um, and specifically... I really want to thank uh, the chamber for um, kind of changing how we did the snow sculptures. I think that that is one of the best additions that we had this year is um, in the past the school district just came over and did the snow sculptures but uh, because it's been cold and it, it's just kind of a, a hassle getting the kids over there back and forth um, we opened it up to the community and the community responded very similar to uh, how Rainy Lake Medical Center uh, responded when we didn't have the Christmas parade. So for all the change that we have going on in our community, change is good. Change can seem bad. Change can be different. But not all change is bad. Sometimes change goes in the right direction. And uh, I think our Icebox Days event this year and a handful of the other things that we've been doing really shows that change can be good. <coughs> so that's all I have for, uh, and next time we'll have a mayor's report that's like actually written. So with uh, that being said, we don't have anything. Oh, please. Mayor, uh, just one minor item. As head of the Blake Committee, I'm still looking for five items from each ward that I haven't seen. I have mine done. I just haven't printed it out. It's on my computer. Yeah, I, 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 I do have it done. All right. I'm done. All right, thank you. All right. I'm not. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, anybody from audience want to come forward? Please. I may have misspoke uh, earlier regarding uh, single-use plastic. If I use the term ban, in Minnesota, you cannot ban the use of plastics. Uh, the idea is to discourage the use of single-use plastic. Right. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, Port Francis has banned it because they can't uh, until a law changes. The best we can do is discourage the use by using reusables, right. uh, such as uh, grocery bags and stuff like that. So I just want to. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a follow-up question? Please. Are grocery bags recyclable? You're talking about the paper bags? They're no, the plastic. I, I know that there's a collection unit inside County Market and in Super One. Super One. Are they? Recyclable. Some some plastic bags are recyclable <coughs> to a degree. Okay, so I don't want to mislead you. Right. Uh, they're like fifty nine percent. Or would or would there be a way to potentially encourage a business to get a I mean a recyclable bag ultimately a cloth bag would be ideal but yes. to perhaps change their bags I would assume to just throw out there's a, a very large corporation on that end of town that has a very hefty bag that I would assume is probably recyclable because it's a very that the plastic itself is, a, is much stronger than at other locations I wonder if there would be a way to then recycle the key on that is it's reusable so sure. It means less and less plastic going into uh, the environment. Uh, but I think that uh, just lost my train of thought. I think the real key is to, is just to discourage. Now, BNS um, Super One and County Market now belong to one family. I'm sure that they have ideas of how they dealt with this in Duluth, Duluth, and Minneapolis, uh, both. Uh, uh, put fees on plastic bags, and they're uh, and some are recyclable. So, sure. so that's that's the approach: is to put a fee on 
plastic bags, hopefully to discourage the use of plastic bags. And that's what I say. The merchants would have, would be keyed in on, on how to approach this best. Okay. Right, thank you. Well, thank you. One more question. How about garbage bags? There are going to be. Uh, I don't know about that. I haven't done any research. Okay. Well, I just wondered. I just thought. Because, uh, yeah, that, that, we all use them. Yeah. And so there are limitations. I, I, I saw when I was doing some research a list of all the things that are, you know, it's going to be pretty difficult for our society to do away with. Mm -hmm. You go to places like Europe where, you know, we have uh, big garbage bins every week to dispose of. And uh, some of the European countries have maybe that much, you know. Yeah. So uh, some countries are much more uh, advanced in how to deal with uh, some of their garbage and trash. But that's a great question. Let's see if I can do some research on it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With uh, no other audience. Our next city council meeting is Monday, February 3rd, uh, 2020 at 5.30. Please stick around. We have an EDA meeting.